When I was young, I lived on a farm in rural Oregon with my parents. We weren't a big commercial farm, just a family type thing. We had five cows, three horses, a small herd of goats, two dogs, and one chicken coop. We also had some Indian runner ducks we kept mostly as pets. We didn't really make any money off the place, just enough to sustain the animals and a little extra for ourselves. Money enough to take a decent vacation, you know, every couple of years. Dad had his other job in town, as an insurance agent. He was the only one around, really, because the town wasn't more than about 1,500 people. And Mom gave horse riding lessons as well. We weren't rich, but we were comfortable. It was an easy life, or at least it could have been a lot worse. I went to school, Dad went to work, Mom took care of the animals, and then we all had dinner together every night, and I would go to bed while Mom and Dad had a beer or two and watch the news. Sometimes at night, I would hear things outside. Mostly just normal stuff, the cows or horses would get spooked by a coyote or something, or I would hear the dogs chasing a rabbit barking their heads off. Every once in a great while, we would find a chicken dead. Dad would always tell me about it, but wouldn't let me see the body, although I asked frequently. He would keep Mom and I inside until he had gone out, did whatever he did with the body, threw sawdust over the blood, and then life would go on as normal. I assumed it was foxes, as I had seen a couple of them out in the pasture over the years, slinking around back and forth through the grass. In the summer when I was 10 years old, I remember helping Mom change the bedding in the horse stalls when we heard a huge racket going on outside. If you've never heard a sound of a horse in pain, you really don't want to, trust me. It almost sounds like a person screaming. Well, that's what we heard, and one of our horses, the Palomino, came running into the barn with a wound on its left thigh. Four long marks, like claw marks, run across its body for about a foot. It had blood running down its leg and was limping. I was so scared by the sight of so much blood that mom locked the horse in the stall and made me go inside with one of the dogs. She told me to lock the door and stay inside until she came in to get me, so I did. Eventually, mom came inside and told me that the horse had hurt itself on the barbed wire that ran the perimeter of the pasture. We owned more land than that, but it was mostly forested. I guess I believed her at the time, but at dinner that night I noticed Dad was being particularly quiet and Mom was talking a lot more than she normally did. She was being really super animated and I noticed that Dad had gotten his rifle out and set it by the back door. Usually he only did that when the coyotes had been acting up. That night I went to bed as normal, but I had trouble falling asleep. I turned on my desk lamp and decided to read comic books until I got tired. I have a very vivid memory of reading Uncanny X-Men and hearing the back door open. I looked out and I could see my dad by the porch light lighting a cigarette and holding his rifle under his arm. He started walking over to the driveway and then turned to follow the fence line. But I couldn't sleep until I knew my dad was back safe. I kept coming downstairs with the excuse of getting water to see if my dad was back in the house yet, and each time all I saw was my mom sitting on the couch in the living room staring at a blank TV screen and looking, well, worried, sighing occasionally. Eventually, about four in the morning, I think, my dad did come back, and I was so tired and relieved that I fell asleep as soon as I knew he was home. But he never really told me what happened that night, and I never thought to ask. Two months later, I was back in school. Man, it rains a lot in Oregon in the fall, and this day was no different. All I could hear from my bedroom was rain hitting the ground in the aluminum roof of the chicken coop. There was light thunder in the distance, but it was slowly getting closer. I thought I heard a coyote yapping out around the garage, or maybe it could have been one of the dogs. Anyways, I looked out, straining my eyes to see whatever there may have been. In a brief moment, in distant lightning flash, I saw something. It almost looked like a person, but it was hunched over and, and with a long torso. It was tall, really tall, and much taller than my dad, who was a good six foot four, at least. I just barely caught a glimpse of it in the near side of the garage, and then the light faded, and I didn't see it again that night. There was another dead chicken the next morning. The third in just many weeks. I told my dad what I had seen the previous night. 
and the color went out of his cheeks momentarily until he told me that the storm must have been playing tricks on me, so I just accepted that. Four months after that, we lost a cow. It was in the middle of the night and we all woke up at the same time. There was a lot of noise in the pasture, but only briefly. The cry of a dying animal and a primitive, guttural yell that I had never heard before. Dad rushed up to my room. I could hear him running up the stairs to my room. He had the rifle in his hand and opened my door. He saw that I was wide awake and told me to stay inside no matter what and to try to go back to sleep. I don't think I have to say that sleep really wasn't an option any longer, but I did stay in my room. I wrapped my blanket tight around my shoulders and stared out the window. Probably about 10 minutes later, I heard gunshots in the field. I don't know what he was shooting at, whether it was whatever attacked the cow or the cow itself, trying to put the animal out of its misery. Dad rarely, if ever, talked about that night. I later found out that he had gotten to the cow only to find it ripped open on the ground, bleeding out from its torso. The shots I heard were him shooting the cow in the head. It kept going on like that for years. A chicken or a duck here and there, something bigger only very rarely. It sounds absurd, but I almost came to think of it as a commonplace. I only ever caught a glimpse of the thing that one time until what comes next. It terrified me. It happened in the middle of the day over the course of a long weekend when my parents had gone to Seattle to see my uncle who was sadly ill. It was on Saturday afternoon when I was 17 years old and I was out in the barn putting out food for the horses and the dogs. The horses were running around in the pasture and the dogs were asleep in the corner of one of the horse stalls. I heard something rustling in the tall grass outside in the pasture. The dogs looked around a little bit, but really didn't seem to mind. I assumed it was just one of the horses waiting for me to leave so they could eat. I kept going about what I was doing, and in several minutes I thought I heard breathing. I turned to look, and it was standing in the door. Tall as hell, even hunched over. The sun was streaming in behind it lighting up all the dust in the air around it to make it look like some kind of sickly halo. It was looking at me, considering me. Maybe it was trying to decide whether or not I was food. I remember swearing, turning and running as fast as I could for the house, not even thinking. Panic caused my legs to move. It was fucking behind me, not even breathing hard. I heard its feet hitting the ground in a constant rhythm. I got to the house, opened the door, slammed it behind me, and locked it as fast as I could. I tore through the house, locking every door and drawing the blinds on every window. I could hear it fucking snarling outside the back door. The dogs were barking at it, but I knew they wouldn't try to attack the thing. It was way too big, and they knew it. It roared at the dogs, and they ran off, probably to hide in the pasture. I went to my parents' bedroom and got my dad's rifle. I loaded it, set up a chair in the living room facing the back door, and waited. It started prowling around the house, but I could hear its feet crunching on the gravel of the driveway and the wooden planks of the back deck. It kept walking back and forth. I thought about trying to look through the window to see it, but I was way too scared. Eventually, after hours of hoping it would go away, the sun finally went down. I turned on all the outside lights and went back up to my room. I opened my window with the rifle in my hands, hoping to be able to pick the thing off from above. I saw it lurking just beyond the glow of the porch light. It had long, lanky, and protruding arms and walked on a bent knee. It was by the chicken coop, and then it disappeared from view. I heard the chicken squawking and screeching. The thing reappeared with a dead, bloody chicken in its hands, and it had bitten off the wings with jaws that were dripping with slime and drool, and then let the dead bird drop to the ground at its feet, and then it looked at me. Its eyes made contact with my eyes. It turned away again, back to the chickens. It came back with another bird, mutilated it in front of me, and then dropped it. It went back again, and again. 
I should have taken a shot at it, but I was astounded and confused trying to figure out what the hell it was doing. Then it hit me. It was a show of power. It was showing me that it was stronger than me, that I could do whatever I wanted to because I couldn't stop it. At the same time, I felt powerless and sickened. Powerless because what I was saying was true. If it was just that thing in me, I wouldn't stand a chance. Sickened because I then realized what kind of intelligence it would need to be able to convey that message. That thought shook me out of my stupor and I remember the rifle at my side. It was heading back to the chickens and I then decided that when it came back, I would take my shot. It strode back to the porch, almost arrogant, walking on a bended knee with those arms so goddamn long that the chicken was dragging on the ground. I raised the rifle up to my eye and tried to steady myself. My heart was beating so hard I could see the rifle shaking ever so slightly, and the rhythm with each heartbeat I could hear the pounding in my own ears. It raised the body to its mouth, and just as it was about to put the chicken's head inside, I squeezed the trigger. The crack of the gun echoed in the now shattered quiet of the nighttime standoff, and I heard it howl. A painful, loud, startled howl. I had hit it on the outside of the shoulder, and it ran off into the night. I never saw it again. It was still out there, though. It still killed chickens and other things more often than before after that night. I'm writing all of this now because my parents died three weeks ago. They were killed in a collision with a drunk driver. Unfortunately, he survived. They left me the farm and I intend to live here with my own family. I'm 32 now and I work for an Oregon Fish and Game Office in Salem. I'm married to a wonderful woman named Stephanie and we have a son named Zachary who just turned four years old. We were expecting a daughter in four months. I've come to the farmhouse alone today, and I told Steph that I just wanted some time alone in my parents' house to deal with some emotions. She was very understanding. I've come back to claim what's rightfully mine. I have Dad's rifle next to me on the table, and it's almost dark. I've also brought several portable halogen lights set up around my house and my own shotgun. I'm also borrowing a handgun from Joe, a guy at the fishing game who I work with. When I am done typing this account of my memories, I will print it out and leave it on the dining room table along with my running ring and my key to the safe deposit box where my will was kept. Everything is loaded and ready. Hopefully I'll return to collect these things and nobody will ever know I wrote this. Steph, in the event that you are the unfortunate soul to find this, which I'm terrified to think seems like a likely outcome. <sighs> Thought of you having to go on alone hurts me more than anything in this world ever can. Just know that I love you more than anything, and I hope you understand that I am doing this to keep you safe. Zachary, I love you and can only hope you grow up to be a good, kind-hearted, and strong man like your grandfather was. To my unborn daughter, if I don't live long enough to meet you, it will literally be the most single greatest regret of my entire life. Tell the police, tell Fish and Game, call Joe. He's one of the few people who knows about this. Make the situation known. Eventually, someone will kill it, even if it isn't me. Hey guys, I hope everyone's doing well, and I hope that you guys enjoyed that story as much as I did. I heard of that story a while ago.